Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're looking at a new item card. And sometimes you look at a new item card, or a new card in general, and you're like, oh yeah, that's going to change stuff. This is one of those cards, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to have an impact. Sometimes I get very excited about cards, and it never pans out, and other times, like today... We're looking at a card that is definitely going to make an impact. I feel extremely strongly about that. So what does it actually do? Well, our translation does come from the lovely David Hockman. And weirdly enough, this was actually shown on a video yesterday on the Japanese YouTube channel. But it was so small and blurry, we had no idea what it did. But now we do. Your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck and draws cards equal to the number of prize cards they have remaining. Cool. It is quite literally a one-sided N. Your opponent gets a new hand equal to the number of prize cards remaining. You don't. Think of it kind of like red card, except it's not red card. And look, Red card, in and of itself, was a good card that saw a fair amount of play. Red card gave your opponent a new hand of four cards. That was good. That saw play. People liked it. Not a huge amount of play. Not in every deck, but it saw a bunch of play. This can put your opponent down to three, two, or even one card in hand. And here's the thing. We lost N back in September. N went away, and we've been without N for a little while now. And the game has been vastly, vastly different. N was this, but for both players. Both players shuffle a hand into their deck and draw a number of cards equal to their remaining prizes. Now, to be fair, N did help you. N gave you draw power in the early game that this doesn't give you. We'll get more onto that in a minute, probably. But the point at the moment here, very, very simply... This can disrupt your opponent and allow for comebacks in a way that we have not had since N rotated out. That's how big this card is. And I've seen some posts from some really good players today basically saying we like this because it allows for comebacks. It puts skill back into the game. This isn't one of those, hey, I'll just put four copies in my deck and then when my opponent's got one prize remaining, I'll play it and they'll draw nothing and I'll win. No! It is so much more complicated than that. There is so much more to it than that. People are going to have to plan for this now. You're going to have to decide how many of these you're willing to play in your deck, because it's not great in the early game. And you're going to have to decide when to play it and make sure that your deck is good enough that you're able to find it when you want it. Because remember, we don't have any real item recovery at the moment. Puzzle of Time also rotated out. And sure, you can use stuff like Orangaroo, but that's your attack for the turn. It's not exactly the easiest thing to get rolling here. So if you want to use this, you've got to use it properly. This isn't like N back when we could just Versus Seeker in the late game and Tapu Lele in the early game. It's not that. But there are ways to grab it. And we might as well start there for the moment. It is easy to grab because we've got Green Search. Green Search is a card that is seeing a lot of play over in Japan at the moment. If you've got no Pokemon in play with abilities, it lets you search your deck for any two trainer cards and put them into your hand. It's Redonk. And what's really weird, this is seeing play as a four of in decks that do play abilities. Because generally they're stage 2s, like the Porygon deck I showed you yesterday. And at that stage, you just want to get set up. And this lets you grab your rare candy and some Pokemon search and all of that good stuff. It's seeing a huge amount of play. And this will allow you to grab Reset Stamp and something else at the same time. Which is pretty gosh darn good. One example that was given by the lovely Stephen Kent over on Facebook. Let's say you're playing a Buzzwall deck. Your opponent goes down to, let's say, three prizes remaining. Well, yay! Now I can use Beast Ring to accelerate energy. 
because my opponent's got three or four prizes remaining. So now I play this, I grab a beast ring to get two energy, and I grab a reset stamp to put my opponent down to three cards in hand. This can get silly. One of the stories I've told many times in my videos is a friend of mine who got a treble prize card penalty at a tournament a while ago. His opponent started the game with three prizes already taken. So my friend just ended him, and he drew nothing, and my friend turned a free prize card loss for a really big deck list error into a huge advantage, which was ridiculous. And at this stage, I should probably reintroduce you to Miss Magius. I believe that Miss Magius is going to bring us some of the dumbest combos with this particular card. Because you see, Miss Magius, when it's on the bench, you can KO it, and then you can draw until you've got seven cards in hand. It's really good draw power, but you've got to give up a prize to do so. The thing is, this is entirely in your hand. With a prize card penalty, your opponent can always elect to just not take the prizes. They can't do that here. And at this stage, I should probably remind you about Duskstone. You see, Duskstone is basically Wally as an item card. You search your deck for a Pokemon to evolve one of your other Pokemon, and, and this is crucial, you can do it on the first turn of the game or when the Pokemon's just been put down. And one of the things you can evolve here is a Misdreavus into a Miss Magius. You can do this straight away on turn one. So you can do this two or three times, draw until you've got seven cards in hand two or three times, at some point, you've got to imagine you're probably going to draw into one of your reset stamp. And oh, look, now you can play it down and put your opponent down to a, I mean, in a perfect world, a two-card hand. And maybe they draw out of it and then they're just rolling and they've got two prizes remaining and that's bad. Or maybe they draw nothing and you win the game. But one of the other Pokemon that can use Duskstone is Honchkrow GX. Honchkrow in general. And Honchkrow GX's GX attack for just a double colorless energy allows you to discard two cards from your opponent's hand. Yeah. I think you see where we're going with this. Because what you can do is potentially miss Magius until your opponent's got two cards in hand. Then you play Honchkrow. Your opponent goes down to a zero card hand. And unless they top deck out of it, you just go and win the game. Incidentally, you don't have to go full Miss Magius here. You can just wait until your opponent's got two prize cards remaining, play a reset stamp, and then use Honchkrow's GX attack and put them in a zero card hand. And make no mistake about it, Honchkrow players are going to adore this card because literally as soon as your opponent goes down to two prizes remaining, you can just use your GX attack and this to put him to a zero card hand. That's a bit ridiculous. Now, pull one out for unknown hand here, because unknown hand is just wrecked by this. I showed you an unknown hand deck the other day with Salazzle, which I thought was quite fun. And if you've got 35 or more cards in hand, you may use this ability if you do win the game. But reset stamp just stops this entirely. Even if you're giving him a new hand of six, it just stops this. Unknown hand is not going to like this. And speaking of the new hand of six, this is not great in the early game. This really is not a great card in the early game because you're essentially giving your opponent a Cynthia. We don't want this, ladies and gentlemen. So you get back to the question of, well, how many of these do you play? Because if you play too many, you end up essentially having a keep it in your hand in the early game and if you're playing something like a Rangaroo that's a really bad thing or you play it and you give your opponent a new hand and that's not a good thing either so there is a question of how many you play here of course if you're playing a heavy Miss Magius line that's probably not going to be an issue but we need to now be playing stuff like Zeb Striker like Pidgeotto because to be honest, Orangaroo's going to rotate out like two weeks after this comes out or is legal for tournament play. You've got to be playing stuff like that now because we didn't have to worry so much with N. The worst we've had lately is Marshadow and Judge. And to be fair, they're good disruptive cards, but that's basically the most your opponent has had. There is no N to 1 in the format as it stands. 
whereas there is soon going to be an end to one. So having something like Zeb Striker, like Pidgeotto on the bench, is going to be more important than ever, and there are going to be an awful lot of games lost by people who get reset stamped down to a hand of one or two cards, but they're not playing any of these draw Pokemon, and they just don't win the game from there. They lose because they draw nothing. I can understand why some people don't like this card. There are going to be games where people lose purely because they just get reset stamped and don't draw anything. But I can also understand why some people really like this card. Because I don't know how many of you were playing back in the end days. I'm assuming a bunch of you. I don't know about you, but I was end to one or two a lot more by good players than I was by average players. So you know what? That alone makes me think this is a card for skill. Hard to recover, not that hard to search out, and it really is going to make a huge difference. But ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it, this is a huge, huge card. I mean, it's a five Wassy card. I pretty much telegraphed that right at the start of the video. This is going to make a difference. This is going to change the way we play the game and build decks and all of that. This is a very big deal. But I would like to know how big of a deal you think it is. So do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wassy Plays, where we talk about other games that don't have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.